flamboyant, <laughs> crazy, charming. It is always showtime with this man, but there's just one question left to answer. Is Gail Monfils tennis greatest entertainer or biggest underachiever? Hmm, difficult one, but let's see. To hit the ground running, let's remind ourselves of Gail's repertoire. Before making his ATP debut in October 2004, Monfils was the world's number one junior player and had won the first three of four junior slam events, and a few months later, he had already won his first ATP title and broken into the top 50. Expectations were high, a precocious talent with all the ingredients to become a world-class player. The excitement was palpable because everyone could see the Frenchman's talent, which we'll talk about shortly. The next few years saw some progress despite occasional injuries, and by 2008, at the age of 21, Monfils was in a semi-final at the French Open, losing to the one and only Roger Federer in four sets. The following year, he had broken into the top 10 and reached a Masters 1000 final. During the late 2000s, a new crop of players had risen to prominence. Novak Djokovic, Andy Murray, Juan Martin Del Potro, and there was Monfils, who showed that he belonged there. But the new decade brought injuries, setbacks, and near wins. Time was ticking. Players arguably not as talented as he were having more success and Monfils hadn't made much progress result-wise. But there was a resurgence in 2016. Monfils had reached another slam semi-final, won an ATP 500 title, and reached a career-high world number six, but that was as good as it got. Afterward, it became a tale of renewed hope, promptly followed by broken promises. Now 36 and close to the end of his career, it calls for a sober reflection of what could have been. But let's see why his place in the sport's history is set in stone by looking at how he charms the crowd, his achievements and his shortcomings. Many fans have bemoaned a sort of monoculture in tennis, big hitting, baseline aggression, diminishing net game. But there is Monfils who is unconventional, unpredictable and multi-dimensional. That's the Monfils we know and love. He once said that if he wasn't a tennis player, he would be playing basketball. And really, he does bring that NBA-like swagger to the game with his slam dunk overheads. And then he also does this. Gail Monfils is everything you can think of when it comes to entertainment and no other professional player comes close. He gives you your money's worth of entertainment with audacious shots and unbelievable craftiness. And every time he does that, you can't help but wonder how many players are capable of producing unbelievable shots. His eccentric style always gets the crowd roaring and it only makes him want to continue giving them something to cheer about. When asked why he hits audacious shots, Monfils said that he felt that he had the ability to hit the shots, but really did it for his personal satisfaction initially. He went on to argue that it took far more concentration to hit a trick shot than to hit a regular one. No doubt, by the time he retires, Monfils would have had the most spectacular highlight reels, but it's not just on the ATP courts. The Frenchman takes the drama a step further off the court. Look at this. Even when he's not holding the racket, the Frenchman gets to entertain the fans in the most unique ways, and it wouldn't be an exaggeration to call him the greatest showman in the sport. But on the flip side, here is Monfils the underachiever. Calling Monfils the greatest natural athlete in tennis may be a bit of a stretch, but how many names really topple his physical profile? Six foot four, great speed, strength and flexibility, yet with mediocre results. It is quite ironic that despite an intimidating physique, Monfils doesn't seem to impose his will on the court and play aggressive tennis. The Frenchman has blistering first serves and a forehand that has clocked 124 miles per hour. See this speed. Let's see it. Is this record breaking territory? So why isn't he bullying his opponents? Credit to his flexibility and ball retrieval skills. He remains one of the best defenders and has even earned the nickname Slider Man because of his unusual sliding technique. Andy Murray once commented that it is as though Monfils almost enjoys running too much and almost likes you to dictate play. You just wonder why he's content enough to chase down balls when he could be making his opponent do all the hard work. But despite his physical attributes, some fans have been quick to point at a frail mentality. 
Many of the Frenchman's matches take longer than they should, partly because of his hesitancy in finishing off points. His shot selection seems awful on some occasions. Many times, we've seen him set up points with his serve or cross-court forehand only to allow the opponent back in the game by hitting the ball meekly into the centre of the court. This frail mentality goes hand in hand with a lack of game plan, which also lies on his coach to try and enforce. A lack of guidance has left Monfils on the wrong end of results too many times. How many coaches has he had throughout his career? Eight? Nine? And he often parts ways with them after a year or two. Is it the calibre of coaches he's had? Or the Frenchman is just one of those difficult students that are hard to coach? Finally, excessive showboating is part of the problem. Monfils is the crowd favourite for a reason, and he has been guilty of playing for the crowd too many times. It might have been a good idea to be a little more selfish and play for himself, limiting the almost impossible strokes and maintaining a sharp focus. Winning ugly or losing beautifully. Which do you think Monfils would pick? So there you have it, a frail mentality, poor game plan, lack of proper guidance and excessive showboating have prevented Monfils from reaching the heights he could have attained. As a matter of fact, his desire to pull off the spectacular has turned out to be costly on many occasions. Like in his 2015 Miami Open match against Burdich when he injured his thigh in a sliding attempt to retrieve a ball. To help up Gael. Well, that's always a danger when you try and slide on a hard court. I mean, the he was forced to retire afterward. Such unnecessary stress on his muscle and joints has contributed to a few of his injuries. Gale's results against opponents that were once tagged his rivals early in his career aren't flattering either. For instance, he has lost all 18 meetings he has had with Djokovic. He's managed two wins in 16 against Nadal and two wins in six meetings with Murray. Interestingly, his most wins against the big four have come against Federer, where he has won four out of their 14 meetings. Understandably, no one compares to the big four in their prime, but to think that Monfils was one put in the same class with the younger boys of the big four is unbelievable. Has Monfils settled for what some may call mediocrity by just being a journeyman who occasionally springs up with surprises? Not exactly, because when he was asked about winning a slam, here is what he had to say. You know, I'm working for this. I'm, uh, I still believe uh, I can do it. He still dreams of it. Despite all the talk of not fulfilling his potential, Monfils' achievements may be talked down in reality. So here's Monfils the Achiever. Monfils has said that tennis is a sport and not a job. When you don't see your job as a job, that's a huge achievement really. I mean, he's making millions doing what he loves and he could care less about what people believe achievements are. He must be thinking to himself, happiness before trophies. Despite his view of the sport, he hasn't done too badly. Monfils has won 11 ATP singles titles at the time of this recording. And arguably playing his best tennis of his career. They might not be the biggest titles, but it's still something to cheer about. He has spent more than 18 years on the tour. Not many players have been able to achieve that level of longevity. How about 500 career wins? Game set in match. Welcome to the 500 clubs. Gael Monfils has over 500 ATP career wins and is only behind Richard Gasquet as the French player with the most wins on the circuit. Only a few scores of players have crossed the 500 mark of career wins in tennis. Monfils also reached the finals of three Masters 1000 events. Although he lost all three of them, the losses were to some of the best players. Novak Djokovic in 2009, Robin Soderling in 2010, both at the Paris Masters, and Rafael Nadal at Monte Carlo in 2016. Perhaps his best chance of winning a Masters was in 2010 after he had beaten both Federer and Murray on his way to the final before falling short against Sodling. A great win, a terrific performance from... Had he not tanked against Federer by blowing a two sets to love lead and two match points against Federer at the quarterfinals of the US Open, winning the slam would have been a bet. With the big guns out, he could have met Marin Cilic in the semis and Nishikori in the finals and fancied his chances. Such opportunities are extremely rare. Results aside, prize money is one of the biggest achievements in the sport too, and Gael Monfils has earned over $20 million, making him the 23rd all-time leader in earnings as of now. That is no small feat. Make no mistake, Monfils is hardworking and has a fiery passion for the sport, but his talents might not have met the results you expected. It appears as though Gale's performance mode comes at the expense of winning. 
Unfortunately for Monfils, consistency remains as elusive a quality for him, and no doubt, recent injuries have played their part in disrupting his career, but no matter what, I don't think it's totally fair to call Monfils the biggest underachiever. Understandably, he hasn't reached the highest peaks, but he's had a very respectable professional career. The Frenchman is an artist, and the raw emotion he draws from the crowd may never be matched. Although Monfils may never win a slam, he will go down as one of the most entertaining players in tennis, and history will reflect that he is the greatest showman. Who knows, this might have been his goal all along. What do you think of Gael Monfils' place in the sport? And what about these other players who never won a slam?